All right, good morning, everybody. It is 9.04, 9.05, and I'd like to call to order the executive committee meeting of Wednesday, May 5th, 2021. Um, Aaron, are you ready? Mm -hmm. uh, please, clerk, please call the roll call. Bates? Here. Berman? Berman here. Ford? Ford here. Fries? Here. Gums? Gums here. Kenyon? Here. Caius? Caius present. Martin? Martin present. Molina? Molina present. <clears throat> Sanchez? Here. Strathman? Here. Surges? Surges here. Tepe? Tepe here. Weber? Shepro? Resigned. Shepro here. Thank you. <laughs> He's done. Okay. Okay. Uh, may we all rise to do the Pledge of Allegiance, Tom? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United of, America, States of America, to the Republic, to the Republic for, which it, for stands, which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. We all ended together good. Even disrupts it from away. Slow down. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the April 7th, 2021 meeting? Rasmus. Berman second. Mr. Ber Mr. Berman seconds. Are there any comments or changes to those minutes? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Thank you. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Is there any public comment online? No? All right, very good. No public comment. Uh, Mr. Onset, could you please present the financials? Good morning, everyone. I really don't have much uh, new to share with you since my report at Finance Committee last week, um, other than to give you an update on the audit. And it's progressing on schedule. We're in the process of finalizing the financial statements, and the auditors are preparing the footnotes and I'll be focused on preparing the management discussion and analysis this week and next week so that everything should be finished on time by the statutory deadline. Um, that um, also I wanted to confirm that we, had, we did receive the $1.9 million from the Grand Victoria Elgin Riverboat Casino as they had said that they would. So that is in our bank account now. Of course, that's for the Riverboat Grant. Um, and that is all I have for this morning. Um, I, I have a question. Uh, the American Recovery Plan money, has that been distributed or do you know when it's supposed to uh, drop? I have because not seen that yet. Um, could you make an inquiry? Uh, would you be able to so you could report it back to us next week? I, I can certainly reach out and see if there's an update. Yes. Thank you. And have we received any direction from the Treasury about how to, its guidelines? Not, not that I have seen yet. I'm still waiting for some communication to come and I check periodically. So I will, as soon as I find out, I will certainly let you know. Okay, thank you. Because it was due at uh, the end of April, I thought, correct? That's what I thought. So, and normally the treasurer's office would, you know, contact us also, you know, in the event that somehow we weren't aware that it was on its way, certainly they would let us know when it arrived in the bank. All right, well, thank you very much. Yes. Are, are there any questions for Mr. Onsick? Any online? No, no, thank you. Is there any old business that needs to be discussed? All right, any, is there any new business that needs to be discussed? No. 
All right. Let's go to our consent agenda. And may I remind you that if you'd like anything pulled from off the consent agenda, uh, please discuss that at that time when you do your presentation. Mr. Kenyon, agriculture. This is a uh, Senate Bill 1692, and it's <clears throat> quite interesting to we farmers who depend on the active drainage districts. And as you know, Kane County has reactivated theirs to take care of flooding. And the fear is that if uh, if you vote by the acre. If people who own our large acreage might vote against any improvements, and so it will be by the person. That's, the, that's what we prefer. <clears throat> Jody, Jody spotted this and, and called it to our attention. Well, Question, Shepro? Uh, yes, Mr. Shepro. Isn't that statutory though, Mike, that it has to be by acreage? I guess we're trying to change it. It's a, it's a bill in the, in the Senate to, to alter the voting. Ah. Would you like to make a motion to move that? I'd like to make a motion to move it. Is there a second? Caius second. Mr. Caius? Is there any discussion? Just a real quick questions, Caius again. Uh, so Mike, the, it currently is per person. They want to change it to per, per acre. Person. And we're opposing that. We want to keep it the we same. We want to change it to per person. We want to keep it at per person. No, no I, I think it's currently, Shepro, I think it's currently per acre. And so we want to make it per uh, person. Jo Jody is here, if I can speak to that. Uh, yes, of course, Jody. Um, it's currently per parcel, and they want to change it to per acre. So if you have a 400-acre uh, farm, you would get wrong. 400 votes. So we want it to remain as per parcel. Okay. And which way? That, that, that also question to Chepro, that also would not mean per person. Right. Correct. It would be per parcel of land. And if the parcel of land is is um, owned by mar multiple owners, um, per the statute, they would elect one person to do their one vote. So On the other hand, if your farm is somehow divided into multiple parcels, then you'd have multiple votes. That is correct, and that is how the statute has been historically. How large is a parcel? <laughs> it, it can vary um, <laughs> anywhere from, you know, no. yeah, it, or, or hundreds of acres, correct. Okay. I mean, an example might be, Shepro again, is that if you've got a farmstead where there's the farm acreage and then someone has a parcel that's just the house, that would be two parcels. Correct. All right, so we all defined what parcels are and uh, what this is going to be about. Is there any other discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, which, which way does the modification go? Request a modification to uh, the parcel vote? To remain the parcel vote, correct. Okay, thank you. Because of the number of absentee landowners we have in the county, uh, that is most beneficial, and that's what the drainage districts uh, support. Um, we've also heard that the Illinois Farm Bureau, in regards to the collar counties, has also supported that that remain as per parcel. Okay, thanks. Who is the chief sponsor of the bill in the Senate? Do we know? Uh, Mr. Bennett. And it was uh, drafted through the Illinois Association of Drainage Districts. <clears throat> Any other questions? Comments? Hearing none. Uh, yes, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you. Just some, uh, some additional information on this as I was looking up. 
Uh, the bill itself has been re-referred to assignments. It looks like it's dead. So while it's certainly appropriate for the county board to express its position on this, this doesn't look like it's going anywhere this year. Thank Move to table. Caius? Why? What's dead? It'll come back to life again. I guarantee you. Well, we have a motion on, on the floor to table. Is there a second to that? Would you like to withdraw? I'll withdraw. We ready for the roll call? Ready for the vote? Please call. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Martin, would you please like to uh, speak to your ordinance uh, on county development? Thank you. Um, we are seeking to establish, and I move uh, the establishment of a special service area regarding property commonly known as 45 West 185 Plank Road uh, to establish a special service uh, to bring that uh, area to bring that property into compliance with our drainage ordinance. Request a second. Surges second. Chapro second. Uh, Mr. Surges seconds. Is there any discussion? Online? Discussion. Discussion, I, I, yes. Surges. Um, John, in the past, I know that there's been some pushback regarding creating SSA type environments. These aren't SSAs. Okay. I mean, they're 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 not a, they're not a tiff. Okay, the, the this is just simply a manner of addressing a problem by paying for it in installments. Perfect. This is this a single parcel SSA? Uh, identify yourself, please. Shepro. Yes. Yeah, Cliff. I think what you're concerned about is when they put something like that over a whole subdivision, right. and subsequent buyers are stuck with it. Correct. Uh, this is a traditional way of dealing with a single parcel problem uh, so that the improvement can, as John says, be paid in installments. Appreciate the education. Any other comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Kenyon, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Shepherd's vice chair, could you please bring forward the the items on, on the executive committee? I would be happy to do that right now. I'm having a little trouble with my computer screen. Could we come back to me after the next item? I can, I can do the first one. Um, yes, we have um, Mr. Ford, please. I can do the, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I can do the uh, workforce development. Oh, the workforce development. So this, Excellent. Uh, I'll, I'll take, I'll make the motion to authorize uh, the contracts with our, this is through the Workforce Development Board. And I believe this for four contracts, uh, approximation amount is $792,408. And it's for uh, services to enhance uh, careers and uh, employment readiness. And I believe uh, Mr. Burgess might be online to uh, give us more detail. I, excuse me, I was trying to get caught up with the, uh, who, who's online, please. Yeah, yes, good morning. This is yes. Scott Berger. Uh, I'm Mr. available. Berger. Good morning. Yes, uh, as Mr. Ford expressed, uh, this resolution authorizes four contracts 
uh, with entities in our area to deliver workforce development services that augment our existing career readiness and employment programs. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this? Hearing none. We need a second. We, oh, I'm sorry. We do. Excuse me. I was trying to okay. get Berman second. Work. Mr. Berman. All right now, any other discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none. Bates. Yes. Bates. Yes. Berman. Berman, yes. Ford. Yes. Fraz. Fraz. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro? Mr. Shepro, are you there? Yeah, Shepro, please record me as yes, and I'm still having computer issues. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, I can handle number two. It's a transportation issue. Yes, please. Uh, Fraz speaking. Um, Item number two is approving a contract for construction with H and H Electric Company out of Franklin Park. This is for two different projects: um, the Fabian and Route 31 intersection and the uh, uh, Orchard Road uh, between Jericho and Route 30. Their highway safety improvement project. So this is in the amount of six hundred and forty-five thousand seven hundred and forty dollars. And the reason it's on the executive se uh, section is that. Um, the state uh, requires approval of a project within 45 days, and we just couldn't get it through our calendar in time. So we, uh, we did brief all the members of the Transportation Committee and bringing it right to executive. So uh, I'll move that. Uh, is there a second? Kaya. Yeah. Yeah. Which one, gentlemen? Kaya, second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Madam Chairman, this is Alan with a question. Of course, Ms. Allen. I uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fraz, is the Fabian and 31 intersection, the one that we talked about at Forest Preserve, where you asked that uh, Forest Preserve staff make sure that the city of Geneva sign was coordinated so that, uh, the, so that the two projects wouldn't get in each other's way? Yeah, actually, Mr. Brown uh, brought that up, but uh, I'm glad he did. But I believe this is a different project. This is um, related to timing of the signal signalization. Right. And Mr. Rickard's going to. So this isn't related to our, our long term project to remodel the intersection. No, this is not related to the long term project. This is um, more immediate safety um, federal funds that we receive to do some enhancements sooner rather than the ultimate design. Yeah. So the the uh, Miss Allen, the one project is probably a you know four year type of uh, timeline, and this is more uh, short term. Okay, I just didn't want to have a an oops uh, moment later on, because um, everything that's going to happen there is is all good. Correct. Thank you. Um, as someone who uh, crosses that intersection and has walked that intersection and biked that intersection. I welcome this. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Kenyon, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe. Tepe, yes. Shepro. Okay. You must still be having some issues. Yes. Mr. Shepro? Okay. Mr. Sanchez, could you speak to the other two items? Uh, sure, Madam Chair. So the next one, we'll need a motion. I'll, I'll move. Um, the resolution authorizing and ratifying intergovernmental agreements to facilitate operation of mass vaccination clinics. Board seconds. 
this is my understanding is, is a bit housekeeping. We have already been working with these other governments at the mass vac sites, but it's been kind of in good faith. And as we're working on these contracts and here now we have the authorization um, for Madam Chair or uh, interim executive director Foster to, to officially sign the IGAs um, with these towns. And I believe that is, that's all mm -hmm. that, that they are, right? Yeah. Are there any other comments? Yeah, interim questions. executive director Foster is on the line if anyone does have any questions for the health department. Surges. Mr. Surges. Surges question. Uh, Jay, Jay, um, for the Spring Hill Mall site, um, Kathy had mentioned in an email that that we are taking care. So, so there's no intergovernmental agreement there. No, because it's just between us and Brookfield. Yes. And, okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Foster? Do you have anything to say? I do not. Thank you. All right. Clerk, please call the roll. B Bates. Yes. Berman. Berman. Yes. Ford. Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Thank you. Uh, and before we go on to our next item, I do want to personally thank, um, and I think we all should thank, the city of Batavia, the city of Elgin, and the city of Aurora be, to being outstanding partners with this effort to vaccinate our citizens. Uh, they have been great stewards, great help, uh, and we deeply appreciate their assistance with this matter. Okay, for the next one, I will move and ask for a second. Uh, for resolution ratifying and authorizing agreements to facilitate operation of mass vax clinics. Uh, this is another bit of housekeeping and it refers to the agreements we have with Pace Bus for their shuttle van services that we've arranged with them. And then also Bright Star Staffing who has been helping us to fill um, some vacancies where we need them at these sites, uh, these temporary positions that we have needed. And second by Berman. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the second part. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, and once again, Pace Bus um, has really stepped up to assist our citizens uh, with offering uh, their vans. Uh, and uh, Mr. Frost has been very instrumental and Mr. Rickard in uh, putting these contracts and agreements together. So I thank you both for that. Um, and if any of our citizens need some help, um, they just have to call our, our, our number uh, that is online and our, we'll provide transportation uh, to any of our back sites. And that I assume will also be including the new one that's gonna be opening up at the Spring Hill Mall. Yes. So we, we cover the county. So uh, clerk, please call the roll. Bates. Bates, yes. Berman. Berman, yes. Ford. Yes. Fries. Yes. Gums. Yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. <clears throat> Sanchez. Yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Surges. Surges, yes. Tepe. Tepe, yes. Shepro? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Mr. Berman. Yes, we have a list here. <clears throat> Do they want to take them all together? Or... <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> one at a time. Is, do we, uh, pardon, one at a time? I have one authorizing establishment of the public defender's office abuse, neglect, attorney position. I motion. Move for approval. Second, Surges. Is there any comment? No? Please take the roll. Bates? Bates, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Yes. Shepro? 
Chair Pro, yes. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair. Fraz, Fraz comment? Yes, Mr. Fraz. Just, um, I mean, we do have the option, which is the way we traditionally did it, like for a long agenda, such as uh, finance, where uh, the chairman can move all items and somebody can second all, and he could go through them uh, as he sees fit. And then if somebody wants to pull one off the consent, we could do that, but just a suggestion. And how would you like to proceed? I would like to proceed that way. That's, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you, you got a roll call, you know, between- Each one. Between finance and transportation, I think we have uh, 35. So um, we'll be here for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll need to cater in. Just time management. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's effective use of all of our time. Uh, so would um, would you like to um, offer to move uh, numbers two through 17 since number one has already been approved? Yes, I would. Berman moves two through 17. Burgess second. Madam Chairman. Yes. Yes. To remove from that inclusive list um, item 14. Have that, have that discussed separately. Anything, is there any other, anything else we should remove? Hearing none. Motion was to exclude uh, item 14 then and uh, approve two through 17. And we have a second on that, correct? Yes. Mr. Sergis. Any discussion on those items? If not, clerk, please call the roll. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Shepro? Chepro, yes. I lost my vote. Kenyon. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Disenfranchised. <laughs> Tepe, yes. Tepe, thank you. Tepe, yes. To uh, let that happen. To discuss item 14, I need a motion to approve. Sanchez moves. Okay. We have a second. Guy is second. Second by you. Uh, okay. Seconds. Fraz. Or, Fraz, second. <laughs> Discussion on item 14, the authorizing temporary assignment pay for the interim executive director of public health and staff. Yes, Mr. Uh, Sanchez here. Um, yes. Yeah, I could speak very briefly on this. Uh, as I mentioned before, interim executive director Foster is on the line and she can, she can give you a little bit more detail. Um, just a, a brief sketch of some of the things that were discussed. Um, this, is, this is something that normally wouldn't have come before the board, but since a conversation did arise and the board sought more information and for it to go through more of the committee process, this is what we're doing. Um, it, it is a temporary pay increase for all of our health department employees. This was for, first established last year under executive director, Barb Jeffers. And from with that, they used money from the CARES Act, the federal reimbursement that the county received of $92 million. So they used a small piece of that for this temporary assignment pay. Um, for this one, it is not coming from any federal assistance money. It's not coming from um, extra money coming from the county's general fund. This is all coming from within the health department's budget the budget that's already been approved by the county board for 2021. And what is causing this ability for them to have about, uh, I think $400,000 for this uh, pay increase, this temporary pay increase, is they have a lot of vacant positions that are budgeted for that they have not been able to fill. And I know there there's questions about, well, are they actively seeking um, to fill these positions, or is this some kind of tactic to give everybody a, a larger paycheck? Uh, I can assure you that they are actively seeking to fill these positions. Uh, and I think exec, uh, Interim Executive Director Foster can give you, again, more details about what that looks like and why it is so difficult for the health department to fill those positions. Um, but being what it may, um, up to this point in the year, we, we have had these vacancies that have a dollar amount attached to them. And because of that, they're able to move that, that savings around and, um, and 
use it in other ways, just like we have done, the county has done with the CARES Act money that um, went towards our payroll. And because of that, we had savings in our budget. Now we're, we have a special reserve fund with all of those savings and we can do what we like with it. So that is really the, the background on this. Uh, there's, there's two parts. There's the temporary pay for employees, but there's also temporary pay increase for uh, the interim executive director. And again, that is something uh, Ms. Foster um, can touch upon because they are kind of two separate issues um, put into one. But um, I think that's, that's all I have on this. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, again, Kathy is here. Uh, yes. Martin. Uh, Martin. I've been, uh, since the Finance Committee meeting in particular, there, there are a myriad, of, uh, a myriad of issues that I think would be more appropriately dealt with at the depth of a committee meeting, uh, the Finance Committee meeting, than, than being presented here. There's issues that impact uh, relations with employees in the entire county and other matters that at least I don't feel were fully vetted. And I would move to table this and send it back to the Finance Committee for further consideration. Chapter uh, seconds. In seconds. Can you please call the roll? Mm. This is to table item 14. And, and to table two. And what is the date of table the table? And send back to the Finance Committee. And what is the meeting, the date of that next meeting? Um, what? Well, there's a some, whatever some the next issues normally scheduled meeting that, that were never discussed. I don't want to talk about the May finance meeting yes, is May 26th. So we're tabling until May 26th. If I may, but there's a motion, Madam to Chair Shepro. Yes, do you have no, a point of order? No discussion. No discussion. We're tabling. I do. Point of order. This is a point of order. Yes. Yes. I think given what I think the intent of the motion is, I think it would more properly be brought as a motion to recommit. Uh, if it's tabled, it doesn't necessarily automatically send it back to the Finance Committee. And I believe that is the intent of Mr. Martin's motion. That, that, that is, and I will amend my motion to recommit to the Finance Committee for further review. And that date of that meeting again is May 26. May 26. So recommit to the Finance Committee meeting on May 26. Okay. So we have a specific date. Is that? Yes, yeah, so if that's the date of the meeting. Yes. Yes, thank you. And who second that? I did. <clears throat> I approve that? I agree with that. Thank you. All right, the vote, please. Bates? No. There's a no. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? No. Fries? No. Gums? No. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, no. Martin? Yes. Molina? No. Sanchez? No. Strathman? No. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven no's. Seven no's. Mm -hmm. And and six yeses. The it, 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 so no's win. So it's not tabled. Mm -hmm. Not post, not recommitted. Table to recommit. Thank you. Uh, so, is there further discussion on this? Um, first off, I Name, wanted please. to Sergis. First off, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Sanchez. Um, him and I have played some emails back and forth, um, and I appreciate your insights and everything on this. My my personal opinion, as I'm looking into this, serving as a chair on human resources, the I asked. It, how many of the employees at the health department were union versus non-union? And there seems to be an almost 70-30 split of union versus non-union employees in there. Within the union contracts, 
it clearly spells out the pandemic pay and the scale that's available for that pandemic pay. And I'm just wondering by what authority on the board are we circumventing the contracts that we have in play and, and how we're addressing, how would we address that then for other contracts um, in the future? And, and that's my hesitation on this solely. If that is not a comment about the job that the department is doing. It is not a comment on, I, I think Kathy Foster is just knocking it out of the park. I can't say enough about her, but I, I can't just set that hat on the side and ignore the contracts that are in play coming up in the future. And, and I just want to voice that as, as my concern, so. Uh, Yes, I could speak to that to Sanchez here. Um, this has been worked out in agreement with the unions. So they're all on board with this action. Um, this was established last year and that's when they actually worked this all out. And if you look at, I don't think the chart is here, but um, the original resolution, it, it has, uh, a, there's a difference in pay increase, temporary pay increase for the union. And it's a lower increase because of the other things that are in their contracts that aren't in the non-union employees. And that is, I believe, a 10% increase. Yeah, I believe it was a specific dollar amount increase. It was not a percentage increase no, that I read. These are percentage increases, um, and the union employees have a lower percentage. I believe it's 10 to 10% 10 for union and uh, 15 or 20 for non-union. And, and, and again, that's not the information I have. I would ask to see that information. And, and I'm not so concerned with the health insurance union. I'm more concerned with the other unions and, and governing, you know, and bodies that we deal with um, in the collective bargaining agreements across the county and how modifying it for one union might modify it for others in the future. I just don't want to push us into a corner is all I'm saying. Yes, Mr. Sir, just the chart is uh, attached with the resolution so you can see. I'm, I've been trying to find that for. Yeah, so if you go in the, the KCHD TAP resolution in our agenda um, after the, the actual words, you'll find the chart there. It's right here. I see that. Yeah. Okay. That and breaks it down. And again, I'm not sure. Is that chart part of the union contract that we negotiated and signed? This is, this is something that is worked out with the union. I don't know that this was put in during our last contract when nobody knew about COVID. So this is something that has been created afterwards, but in agreement, in agreement with the union. Um, uh, Mr. Shepard, please. Mr. Kenyon had his hand up. Um, it doesn't look right. This does not look right. If I was in any other department, I'd say, hey, we got a lot of extra COVID money. Let's pass it out. It's Christmas. This is not the way to conduct business. Mm. We, we have to be more involved in the process of rewarding our employees. And because there's leftover money, we don't just always pass it out. It's, it's like the school districts. Buy extra books and put them in the warehouse, but we're giving out money. I don't, it, it just doesn't smell, smell right. Thank Look you. in the wood pile if there's a skunk in there. Mr. Shepard? Well, I have a question and a comment. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Sanchez said it's been worked out with the union and I guess I'm echoing Mr. Sergis's question about what does that mean worked out? Is there a memorandum of understanding? Is there something that formally deals with the, with the union uh, contract? Because my understanding and those who were present at the meeting could speak to that is that uh, when the state's attorney discussed this, there was no mention made at all about the union uh, that there being a question because there was a union contract. And one of the reasons I supported the motion to send it back, which I note was also supported by the committee chair, uh, is that, as Mr. Martin said, I think that issue needed to be more thoroughly examined than taking up the time of this committee today. And obviously, if this resolution passed on, we will have this conversation again uh, next week. And then I also had a further understanding that uh, arguably putting the union issue to one side, if you can, 
that uh, the executive director of the department had the authority to adjust the compensation. And the, what this is really about is whether or not the executive director's salary can be adjusted because that would only could only be adjusted by the board, not uh, by the department. So those are, I guess, comments and questions combined. And, uh, yes, Mr. Teppe. Hi, Mr. Teppe here. Um, I brought up an objection to this a week ago in the executive committee because in the words of Mr. Kenyon, it just doesn't smell right. And, and I think he's absolutely correct. I firmly believe that people should be compensated appropriately for their work. We need, if people are being underpaid, that needs to be brought before us and we need to deal with it. And, but if we're saying we have funds left over because we're understaffed and we're going to then send that out to the existing employees, I feel it's inappropriate for that to be in the hands of a manager. That's the kind of thing that goes to a board. Uh, and if that policy exists, that policy itself needs to be looked at. But this is $340,000 of funds that are going to be awarded when there are significant other departments that have been affected by this COVID situation that have put in extra work, extra hours, extra time, the IT department just being one of them. And to say that this department, because there's funds available in the budget is going to be able to do this, to me, it's just wrong. So Sanchez here, Mr. Tepe, are you suggesting that the health department should take their savings and split it up with these other departments that have also been affected by COVID? I'm suggesting that it's not appropriate for a manager to be able to authorize things of this nature. And I'm suggesting that it's not appropriate to do this in any one department when the entire county has been affected by this. Uh, I think it's inappropriate to have a separate agreement with one union. So there are so many things about this that I feel are inappropriate that I think it needs to be looked at in depth. I wasn't here a year ago. If I had been, I would have brought it up then if I had seen something like this. This to me is just not being vetted properly and I think it's wrong to do it in this manner. Um, I, I have a question. It says here on the resolution that it begins retroactively on March 21st, 2021 and then ends on November 27th, 2021. And if this money is uh, used because there is additional money because of um, uh, payroll, uh, not expended payroll because staff, un unfilled staff positions, what happens if those staff positions do get filled in that interim? And that is a question I had. And my understanding is this is money that has been saved up to this point in time in the budget year. So each month that goes by, there is money that has been allotted that's spread out through the whole year. So if a position is filled, then the remainder of that budgeted money for that position goes to that position. My understanding is not all of the money is, is being used for this and the savings. But uh, actually, Canel Snowden is on the line. He is our <clears throat> finance person, and he would be a better person to ask that question, too. And Canel, uh, I have one other question to add on to that, then. So that if a staff member is uh, a new employee joins the health department, will they uh, automatically get the temporary pay increase as well? To make them equal to all others? Hi, this is Canel. Uh, that is not the uh, initial intent of um, of the re of the request to increase uh, the salaries for this temporary assignment. Shepro, I'm not sure I understand the answer. The short answer. Is no. <laughs> Ms. Madam Chairman Bates, please. I, I'm sorry, uh, can, uh, Ms. Bates, please. I have, can, can you please repeat what you just said? Because I'm, I'm, I may not have heard you properly. You, she said it was a short answer to, can you repeat the answer? My understanding of the question is, uh, will 
uh, employees hired after uh, this uh, has been approved, will they get mm -hmm. uh, the temporary assignment pay? And the answer is no. Oh. So just to drill down to that, will they be paid at market rate that was set previously? They will, will be they paid be less the, than or not equal be, to? They'll be paid at the rate uh, that is uh, for that position, uh, not including the uh, temporary assignment pay. I'm sorry, Mayor. Who's speaking? I'm sorry. This is Canal Snowden. Snowden. He's a finance person for the health department. Okay. And just to add, um, the um, Kane County Finance, uh, Joe, uh, went through our numbers uh, in great detail as well. Yes, Mr. Onsik has looked at this and has understood that there is the adequate savings here to cover this in the budget. And if the, the savings isn't used, if and what Mr. Tebby would suggest is to not use it, then it would have to wait until the end of the budget year for it to go back into the general fund and be determined with the other piles of unused money from budgets, you know, what to do with it. So it's something that uh, would just literally sit there and collect dust if not used now. Uh, Mr. Martin, and then Mr. Tebby. Mr. Tebby raised the, the point. Um, and, and you've discussed it, but we're spending money. We're committing to money in the future that may otherwise be spent if we in fact do what we are to do, which is to fill positions. We have questions raised about union contracts. And um, you know, the reason I wanted to table it is I feel like we're going off half cocked. And I, this, conversation here has just supported my belief that that um, this this at a minimum this deserves <coughs> excuse me at a minimum this deserves discussion that motion failed so as I stand here today with all of these unanswered unanswered questions particularly as it rates to countywide offices countywide union negotiations and everything else uh, I feel very insecure about uh, voting for this and and um, I, I just don't, and, and points get raised and they say, well, the intent is not to do this or the intent is not to do that. It doesn't say that any place. We're just kind of saying here, take the 300 and do with it as you deem appropriate. And I, 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 I'm uncomfortable with it. And I, I will vote no today for, for that reason. I think, excuse me, Mr. Tibby, Ms. Um, I think Ms. Bates had a comment. I overstepped her. Thank Ms. you, Bates. Madam Chairman. Uh, this is, uh, can I direct a question to Mr. Tepe or to the group? Would it be more palatable to the group if we removed uh, the um, Ms. Foster's um, from the group so that that could be handled by the board and it could be possibly sent back to a uh, some other committee to answer that. And then the other employees could be, thank you, Ms. Foster for nodding, um, that that would uncomplicate things. It, thank you. It, is that a motion? I will move that we remove the uh, temporary director from the um, resolution. I will second that, Sanchez. Is there any discussion on that? Um, Chapro. Oh, oh, Mr. Shepro, please. Um, I don't Mr. Tepe, think Mr. That... is this a point of order? No. Okay. No, Mr. Mr. Uh, Tepe has the floor. Uh, thank you, Tepe. Here, I'd like to uh, address Mr. Sanchez's comment earlier about the fact that the three hundred and forty thousand dollars would go unused, huh. and that it would not go back into the budget or not go back into the general fund until next year. That's our job. Our job is to manage these funds and expending the money because it's available is, is not, and that it's, that it's not going to go unused is, is wrong. These are funds that we could use next year and could budget next year. And we should take a good look at employee compensation and use it for funding like that. So that argument to me just doesn't, 
is valid. Thank you. Um, just to direct comments, we have a motion on the floor to remove Ms. Fosser's this, this increase in her compensation. Thanks. Jepro, comment? Yes. First, I want to make sure I understand the, is the motion to remove the interim executive directors proposed so that what would remain would be for everybody else? I, that's my understanding. That is my intention. And, and that, if that's that the case, I don't think it addresses any of the concerns that were raised by Mr. Martin and Mr. Tepe and Mr. Kenyon. I mean, if there are union issues I th and, and all the other issues that were raised remain, even if her uh, compensation is removed uh, because she's not a union member. And I thought that we had concluded that it is her salary that actually needs board action to approve. So I, I'm not sure that the the amendment, if passed, would help clarify the situation. It would break it up into two separate actions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shepherd. And I know we have other board members who like to comment, but I have been reminded that Mr. Snowden would like to uh, weigh in on this. Mr. Snowden, you have the floor. Uh, uh, regarding um, how this all relates into what the health department does and I know that uh, both Kathy and uh, uh, Jared are totally aware of this, is that the majority of our funds are grant related and require certain things that have to be done to maintain the health department certification. So with that in mind, that the health department continues to do about 340 required deliverable activities that must be done along with the uh, COVID-19 activities uh, that they are performing. So the $300,000 is uh, totally connected to the performance of the department and potentially impacts about 45% of our revenue or about $3 million. So going forward, if we do not accomplish those deliverables, the reduction in revenue would occur in the, proceed in the next subsequent years and therefore those funds just wouldn't be available. I, I'm, can, so you well, are, to clarify, Mr. Snowden, you're saying that these pay raises are analogous to job performance for certification to get federal dollars. Federal, state, and actually uh, private foundations with the health department receives its funds from about 45% of its revenue comes from those organizations. So question, Shepro? Uh, I believe Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, please, not yet, Mr. Shepro. <laughs> yes, Mr. Okay. This, this is John Martin. Um, I, I appreciate Mrs. Bates' effort at finding a way forward here, but it, brings, it raises to me a concern that I've been having and in, which increases over the last few weeks is that we tend to have, we're, we're tending to have conversations making substantive changes in resolutions and proposals that uh, are, we're making on the fly as we sit in a, in a, in a meeting room. And I find that very discomforting because, and I and, and I'm I'm not saying Mavis that this is absolutely the case. I don't know that I think all that well on the fly. Maybe everybody else does, but tomorrow morning I'm gonna I'll wake up and say, oh my gosh, look what we did because we did this. This stuff this stuff needs to be when we when we get to this stage when we're at the executive committee, this deal needs to be done. This can't be we can't have as an executive committee the responsibility of, of, in effect, reinventing the wheel when, when a proposition comes before us. This, this needs to be fully vetted and understood. And what I see in this room are a whole series of questions. I don't want people not to get paid. I don't want people to be not properly rewarded. But I, I have an obligation, uh, as we all do in my mind, to the, to the taxpayers 
that we understand what we're doing and we understand the ramifications of what we're doing. So to this motion, uh, I am opposed to the motion to amend because I'm uncomfortable making substantive changes and uh, we, we've never had a good track record. Uh, if those of us who will remember back on what we do on the fly uh, is, is a group. And I don't know that we're separate from the world on that. These things need to be, these things need to be considered and presented as a package that goes up and down and not, and not substantive changes made in the interim. So I will oppose the amendment and, and want the matter to stand as it was originally proposed. We do have a motion on the floor. Let's, I'd like to settle this so we can move forward with the actual resolution. Um, Ms. Madam Chair, I... Mr. Shepherd, um, please, you've had opportunities to speak. I'd like other board members, <clears throat> if I may, to chime in on this as well. Thank you. I thought we'll you were going to call the vote. N not just yet. Not just yet. Yes. Kaya had his hand up. Uh, I think this direct this question relates directly to the amendment. Uh, is that the uh, director has the uh, option and the full ability to to grant this? The question is: Does the the uh, director can she give the money to the employees without us voting on it on that part of it? We just have to vote to give her the, the money that sh that is asked for in this. Is that correct? These are two separate issues. One, we if we get rid of the, if, if this amendment says it takes her out of it, th then what's left is the money to everybody but the director, and she could do that anyway. Is that correct? That is my I, understanding. I don't think we know that, Chuck I, No, I can speak to that. This is Sanchez. Um, this is normally an action that would be within her authority to perform without board approval. But since it did get raised as a question um, from the board and the board indicated they wanted it to be vetted more properly, then it came back through this process. So, so normally she would have the authority to authorize everyone else's pay but because it was questioned, it's going through us. But except her own. Her own is, this motion is separating it. And that is also something Ms. Foster and I discussed previously is separating her pay from this resolution. Um, at because this, that at, we, at this the question is, do we have, we don't have to vote on her to give raises to everybody else, but we do have to vote to give her a raise. Under so there are normally, yes. Two separate issues yeah. then. They are. They are. This, uh, perhaps Ms. Foster can speak to that. Yes, thank you. Um, and I just want to say I appreciate all the support that uh, you all have shown during this pandemic. It's been very important. I know there's been a lot of agreements and everything that's gone through that you've had to go through. And, it, you know, it's different times. We're in a pandemic. Um, but I do want to say that the union representative is fully aware. He was aware last time and aware this time, and he's in agreement with the temporary assignment pays for the union workers. Um, there's also a article in the collective bargaining agreement that addresses temporary assignment pays as well. So that is in there. And um, as far as I would be fine with uh, taking out my um, pay in there, if that will help move this forward. I, I just want to say I, your full support will show support for our COVID heroes during this pandemic. I mean, that's, I really feel strongly about that. I, it would be helpful. So um, I, I, the question that I think we need to hear is that do you have full authority to compensate your employees as you feel appropriate within the restraints of your budget? Yes. So um, that is something that I do have within uh, my budget authority, not for my own, but for uh, that has been verified with the state's attorney's office. Is Jamie still on? I saw her on before, but maybe she left. But that has been verified with um, the state's attorney's office. Um, Ms. Nearman's on. 
Is, is Ms. Nierman on? Is a state's attorney online? Assistant state's attorney? Good morning, Michelle Nierman. Uh, Ms. Nierman, please, could you clarify this? Can you repeat the question, please? The question was, does interim director Foster have the ability to authorize the temporary pay increases on her own? Yes, I, I believe she does. Uh, the, the caveat there is that, that uh, as, as I believe Mr. Sir just mentioned, and as well as a couple other board members. Excuse me, Michelle, you're, can you adjust your microphone? It's. Um, it, it, is this helpful or not? Yes. Okay. okay. That's, I think so. I, I continue to have problems with this monitor, so I apologize for that. Um, as, as one of the board members, I believe as Mr. Sergis had mentioned, I think there was some concern regarding the collective bargaining agreement and uh, working on an agreement with the union because you can't just voluntarily give people increases in pay without the agreement of the union. Um, Ms. Foster has indicated that she did work out something with uh, the union, so I don't have the particulars of that, but I believe there was some sort of um, email exchange documenting agreement um, from my memory um, and Ms. Foster can probably you know fill in the blanks there um, in terms of how that agreement was worked out um, and I was not party to that the last time around um, and I don't know if Lane or Mushin was but some sort of agreement was worked out last time and I believe that was worked out now but otherwise, the uh, department has are given the authority to set salaries of individual employees. Um, the board historically has not, uh, you know, gotten into the weeds in terms of trying to determine uh, the salary of each employee within the department. Um, this is an unusual circumstance with respect to the health department because healthcare workers are so difficult to find. Public health workers are so difficult to find right now. They do have a number of vacancies. Um, there are a number of other departments, as has been acknowledged by the board, has, you know, have gone over and above, um, you know, what their normal job duties were, are because of the pandemic. But in particular, the health department, um, just across the board, is asking all of its employees to go over and above. Mm -hmm. So I hope that clarifies that answer. We have a motion uh, and a second to remove, and I, I'm paraphrasing, and I'm sure the clerk can read it out exactly. Um, and Ms. Bates, you can clarify, um, to remove from this resolution, <laughs> Kathy Foster's salary. I still have a question, Madam Chair, Shepro. Oh, oh, Mr. Shepro. And yes. now I guess I have it for the state's attorney. Um, the longer this discussion goes on, the more confused I get. If I understood the comment from the, uh, the finance uh, director for the health department, I, I understood him to be saying that if these raises were not implemented, that would put us potentially in violation of our grant agreements and jeopardize further funding. And if that is true, I guess my question would be, if we didn't have this extra money available, does that mean that we would be in danger of losing our certification? I don't understand that answer at all. And it didn't seem to me that it, it made a lot of sense. And it just, the, the tenor of so many of these comments are vague, unspecific, uh, and I think just illustrates the point that we started with however many minutes ago this discussion started, that we've got all these partial answers and we're in some cases either guessing at the answers or coming up with answers that don't appear to be supported. That's my comment. Thank you. And we, yes, we, we, if I may, we seem to have two issues. One is increasing compensation for staff, uh, for the health department, both union and um, non-union, <clears throat> as well as compensation for the director. And there's a motion on the floor to remove the compensation 
discussion from this resolution for Kathy, Director Kathy Fosser. Uh, so is there any other comments about that resolution to, or that motion to remove her compensation from this resolution? Yes. I, I have been consistent. Name please. Sergis, sorry. I have been consistent in my comments on this. The, the, the debate that we're having should not be construed as is somebody doing their job, doing their job above. They are doing a wonderful job. My situation is I don't have any documentation, and I agree with Mr. Martin, I, I don't have any documentation here that would allow me to defend myself later in front of other unions that said we could modify this agreement. So regardless of Ms. Foster, who in my opinion is, is the poster child for getting more money in this, she has been wonderful. I just need that documentation in line and we simply don't have it. We asked for it before, we're asking for it again. If she has the authority, do what you need to do and we'll consider her separately but I am not in favor of doing this. I would like this to go back to finance. Let's work out these details so we have it all in line because if this comes back to bite us in collective bargaining, bargaining agreements in six months, I'm, I'm gonna be more than vocal about the objections that we did today. And, and, and again, that is not an indictment in any way for the wonderful job our health department has done we just need to put our ducks in a row for crying out loud. That, I mean, that's all we're trying to do. Sanchez here. Uh, Matthew Lang is the union representative for the health department, and I've spoken with him personally on this issue. Uh, him and all the union employees are fully in line with this. If you'd like his number, I can put you in touch with him. Jared, again, I'm not worried about this union. I'm worried about all the other ones that could come out of the woodwork and say, if you did it for them as favored nation, why didn't you do it for us? That's my concern in a nutshell. Well, as Ms. Foster indicated, there is a provision in union contracts on temporary assignment pay. So if other unions have similar provisions and they have departments with similar uh, savings in their budget, then they're able to do such things. And, and I would believe that the language that was in the original collective bargaining agreement that, was, that we signed was modified afterwards. So that's nothing that precludes all these other unions coming back and saying, if you modified theirs, then modify ours. I'm, I'm just trying to protect us, Th that's all. And I mean. We still have a motion on the floor, Mr. Berman. Well, you know, I think the idea of taking it back to the Finance Committee is fine, but I think that uh, our state's attorney staff has said that uh, what uh, our interim director has done is legal from the standpoint of, of uh, taking those extra funds that she has in her budget and distributing them as salary, a temporary salary. And if it's the legal thing, she has the legality to do that, then uh, what we're really wasting our time talking about it, if that's what she wants to do. But as far as removing her from, uh, uh, from that pay increase, that is something that we, we can make a decision on. But other than that, it seems to me that uh, she has the legal right to do what she wants to do with the, the way it stands with her excess uh, funds. I'd like to call the question. Roll, roll call, please. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, no. Molina? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Uh, sir, to remove, yes. Tepe? No. Shepro? No. It passes. So now we have the main motion. We still need, yeah. We have a motion on the floor to authorize a temporary assignment pay for public health and staff. Bates. 
Yes. There quite, or would, there's more discussion on this now? Yes, we can have that? discussion on this with the change. Okay, just one question then. Uh, do we need to vote on it? She can do it anyway? Yes. Yes. Yes, we need to vote on it? Yes, we do. We have not yet voted on this. Well, no, but I mean, do we need to pass it in order for it to do it? Yes, it's Sanchez here. Um, because it was raised at the county board and the county board sought more information, the state's attorney, uh, assistant state's attorney Nearman advised us that we should run it through this process. So it would need approval. Thank you. I, maybe Ms. Bates was ahead of me. Oh, Ms. Bates, thank you. <clears throat> uh, yes, are we calling roll? Not no, quite I need yet. a comment. Un unless you want to, um, I think there's several other comments that may need to be made, Ms. Bates. We will be calling roll in just a minute. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Um, Fraz speaking. Um, yeah, my, my concern with not approving this today is the, another 30 day delay in getting something. I know Chairman Sanchez and Madam Chairman and many, many people have been working through this emergency, getting these VAC sites set up. Um, it's been an amazing thing. And, and I know all of our employees have been affected by this, but there's absolutely no doubt that the health department is the frontline infantry in this battle. So I support, uh, I support them. But uh, another way to look at this, maybe it's simplistic, but uh, you know, we've allotted a set amount of money to the health department to get their functions done in normal times. We have fewer people doing that same job in extraordinary times. And I, you know, we've allotted a set amount of money. It's getting done. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, this allows us a convenient way to give a temporary one-time bonus to these people, get it done now, and uh, move forward and show them that we're supporting them. And I support it. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Madam Chair Gums. Uh, yes, Ms. Gums. Um, just to address the issue of the other unions, um, you know, having a little experience with contracts, uh, temporary work pay is pretty standard language in almost every contract that I've been uh, exposed to. Um, any other union that might have an issue, we have to remember that those are separate contracts. We are not talking about them right now, and they can come back and say why why didn't you do for us what you did for somebody else? Well, that calls the question and they have the ability to do that. Um, I think that we should take a look at this individual contract, realize that the ability is there to raise their salary under the language of temporary raises and compensate them for the extraordinary work that they've done in a very unusual time. So I support this. Thank you. If there's no other comments on this, yes. Appropriate oh, comment. Appropriate. I got my tax bills yesterday. <laughs> if you think you're going to go home and people aren't going to say, what the heck are you guys doing? You're living a dream world. We have better uses for that money. And we're rushing it through. I don't think they're not doing a good job, but people don't, they won't realize what we're trying to do. Uh, people, the people that pay my bills for being there, our taxpayers. You got your bill today, they got their bill, and they're gonna say, don't you guys care? You're in a fishbowl. Everything you do is gonna be out before you get home. Thank you for those comments. Um, is there anybody Copy, else? Please. Uh, Copy, please. Mr. Kobe, yes. Yeah, again, I don't know if this is my time or place. Uh, and I've been Mr. Kobe, I'm you. sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. I have a hard time hearing you. How's this? That's much better. Thank you. Okay. Uh, like I say, I don't know if this is my time or place. I apologize if, uh, if it offers any offense. But uh, the, I've got 10 points of discussion that I've bit my tongue on. But... Uh, the essence to this point is, is not the argument whether the employees deserve the raise or not. That's so obvious. The point of the discussion, the point of the proper vetting of the issue, and um, supposedly there's, uh, Mr. Snowden offered prepared statements 
um, Mr. Sanchez, he, um, he's been negotiating with the, the union on the side. Um, this is not a mystery that this is taking place, but the whole, the whole um, process of eliminating a common parliamentary procedure just adds suspicion to the, uh, to the mode of operandi. And um, I think that the common method of vetting would have been appropriate and would have probably made, met the same ends, possibly. Thank you. I'm sorry to uh, take your time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for those comments. Yes. Uh, Sanchez here. Um, I understand Mr. Kenyon's uh, most recent comment and how it might be perceived. This is, uh, unfortunately, we are a, a pretty large sized county in the Collar County area, but our health department per capita is largely underfunded. Uh, McHenry County, just off the top of my head, I think has a few more million dollars in their budget and 200,000 fewer residents than we do. So they're paying a lot more for public health up in McHenry County than we are. Um, we're working on getting some comparison numbers together so that the county board can really understand the difference in pay per capita from Kane County to our, our neighboring collar counties. It is very low. So when we talk about, well, we should just talk you know, about increasing their pay, not giving them temporary pay increase, but just increase their salaries. Well, that is something we should talk about. Let's look at the history of the health department budget. 10 years or so ago, Catherine McConaughey or Carrie McConaughey was in here and she cut the health department in half as a, as a savings mechanism. She just reduced the, the head count at the health department by 50% and they've never recovered since. Eight years, uh, Chairman Lawson worked very hard at um, continuing a, a tax levy freeze. And during that time, the health department was more or less kept at arm's length and got to a point where they didn't ask for more money anymore. They just learned to live within their meager little budget that we would give them partially from the riverboat grant money. Um, so our, our people at the health department are not paid comparatively as well as our neighboring collar counties. And so this temporary pay increase is really helping to make up for that lack that the previous eight to 10 um, years of county board budgeting has has offered the health department. It, 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 this is a conversation I do think that we should have when it comes to the budget season about increasing, you know, how we might be able to um, increase the budget at the health department. But for right now, this is kind of a, you know, it's a sort of triage. This is, this is, they're in the trenches and they're bleeding. We want to put some bandages on them so that they'll keep fighting for us because they want to keep fighting for us. Um, but for a long time, we, we are a training ground for other counties. People come in here fresh out of college because of the low pay. It's an easy job to get. They get training, and then they go to DuPage County that offers them twice as much money for 25% less work, you know, or Lake County, same thing. So we are oftentimes a training ground. We're doing our best to hang on to employees. We've lost some during COVID, and they're now being asked to work during Mother's Day, for instance. That, that's something that nobody wants. Um, so that's how I look at this is it, we're just so severely under underfunded in Kane County Health Department. This is just, it's one way to help um, ease the pain and the burden for our employees. So I support this. Madam Chair Strathman here. Yes, Ms. Strathman. I would like to refer back to Mr. Frazzi's comments. I think he summed this up nicely and succinctly and made it very simple. And I support what he said about um, supporting the health department in this time and that this is a, a budget issue for them to handle. And I agree with that. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Brown. Brown, Brown, please. Yes. Um, I'm just a bit confused on what, I'm not on this committee. I'm not on this committee, but I do have a, a question on what you're gonna be voting on. It appears to me as though you've removed Kathy Foster from this resolution. So now this board, this committee is going to be voting on authorizing this extra pay for employees that we've been advised we don't need to have 
an input on. The director can make this decision on her own. So I don't understand why we're, why you as this finance committee or, or um, I'm sorry, executive committee is going to be voting on something that you don't need to vote on. And in fact, you're not voting on something that you would need to vote on. You're, you're not at this point in time considering Kathy Foster's increase of pay. So I'm confused on that. And the other just point I want to make is I think you're making a terrible precedence here. I'm not arguing and I'm not going to get into the debate that's been had because it's been a good debate. But I, I think you're setting a terrible precedence here because as, as Drew Fraz mentioned, you know, a lot of people work very hard in setting up these VAC centers. And I agree with that. And a lot of people have worked very hard through this pandemic. But a lot of other people besides the health department have done that. IT department, maintenance, a lot of other departments have done this that discussion hasn't been started yet. And I think if you vote on this here today and authorize <clears throat> payment to, or an increase in pay, temporary increase in pay to employees that you don't even need to vote on, you're, you're really going down the wrong road here. So I just, I, I just needed to make that comment. I think there's some bad things going on here with this. Thank you. Uh, so here's the question, and um, perhaps to answer that, do we need to vote on this resolution? Is it uh, now that Ms. Foster's salary has been removed from the resolution, and perhaps State's Attorney, uh, can Michelle, can you answer that? Do we need to continue with this vote, or is it already been resolved? Uh, Good, good morning again. Um, Madam Chair, my concern was the was based upon concerns raised at the last board meeting. I think it is the will of the board as expressed uh, last month that this issue become come before them. While the board doesn't normally uh, get involved in temporary adjustments of pay uh, in cases of vacancies, um, they clearly expressed last month that they did want to have a say on it. So I would recommend that it go back to the board um, just because now there is a question as to whether Kathy has the authority. Um, normally department heads could do have the authority to, to address this. I think the concerns of the board as expressed last month were that it was just such, on such a large scale. It was across the board involving all employees that the board wanted to have a, a say in the policy matter. Thank you. I'm sorry, so why do we have to? Uh, because apparently the board uh, suggested that this was their will because it was across the board, not just for individual employees, but for all employees within the health department. It's a broad, it's a broad brush stroke rather than targeted. Can we call a question, please? Um, I'd like to call the question. I just want clarification that the resolution is changed to authorizing temporary assignment pay for public health and staff. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Yes. May we please call the vote? Bates. Yes. Berman. Berman, no. Ford. Yes. Fries. Yes. Gums. She's on mute. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Kenyon. Caius. Caius, yes. Martin. Martin, no. Molina. Molina, yes. <clears throat> Sanchez. Yes. Strathman. Yes. Surges. No. Tepe. Tepe, no. Chepro. Chepro, no. Motion passes. That's the end of uh, finance. Uh. Thank you. A Pro parliamentary question, Pro Madam Party Chair Dale. Shepro. Uh, yes, Mr. Shepro. Robust Does that mean then that this will be forwarded to the board agenda, but off consent? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. Surges, um, 
I, I'm with this passing. I'm I'm extremely uncomfortable with bypassing Miss Fosser. Do we have the ability to motion to include her in this? No, we just removed her. In my understanding, no, we removed no. her. We don't. We just removed so, her. So, for consideration, I don't want this falling off the vine for Kathy. Does that mean to start this all over? It has to come for her through health. Correct. Then yes. finance, then exec. Exactly. Yes. Then J Jared, I would hope that that is on your agenda. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll start the conversation next month. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, later this month. Good clarification. And I'm here. Uh, yes, who's that? I apologize. It's Michelle Nierman. One of the difficulties with Zoom, trying to get. Oh. Um, they, uh, someone who is changing their mind on the way they voted to remove Kathy could do a motion to reconsider if they wanted to. I'm, I'm, I'm having problems hearing you again. Then a motion to reconsider if someone who wanted to. Oh, we okay. People who are Thank changing you. their mind. It's not my ears. It's. <laughs> It is Madam Chair, basically, yes. Yes. Um, the reason I moved this to remove Ms. Foster from this was to uncomplicate things. I am all in favor of another um, you know, resolution coming through very soon that would support a raise for her, but it seemed like part of the complication was that a director cannot grant her own uh, raise and that that should be considered a, as a separate motion by the board, and I think that will keep it less complicated and it's already very complicated. So I would urge uh, that we have a separate uh, and, and Mr. Jer uh, Mr. Sanchez can work on that soon uh, to have that be a separate um, issue. Thank mm -hmm. you. And that's that I think is what has been decided upon. Uh, so with no other questions regarding this, can we please move to public service? Thank you, Madam Chair, Mr. Tepe here. Um, we have one resolution, so I will move for them to happen all at the same time. Second it. Uh, this particular resolution is uh, to appoint additional members to the Board of Review. It is an annual resolution that, that gives the uh, uh, chairman the responsibility to appoint people as needed for review. Uh, this is for a review of the tax bills as noted earlier by, uh, uh, by Mr. Kenyon. Uh, that everybody is receiving and uh, they may have some questions about it. So this will properly staff uh, or provide the ability for staffing that. So I move for the uh, adoption of this resolution. Uh, do I have a second? <clears throat> is there any discussion on this? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a question. Dean, please. Forward, I'm sorry. Um, what is the time? I'm actually for this. I just want to know what is the timeline for somebody to submit their uh, disagreement with their tax bill uh, when we get that question from residents? M Mr. Armstrong? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the, uh, if you disagree with your tax bill, the timeline to uh, file an assessment complaint was last year. Uh, to correct any misunderstandings uh, about this, this is not to review tax bills. This is to review assessments. And assessment notices are published in newspapers. And if there are changes made by the assessors, there are notices sent in the year prior. That will happen this year by statute. The deadline is 30 days from publication. Unfortunately, we can't control when newspapers actually get it in the paper. So we, we work with these on an as needed basis each year. Uh, I certainly put it on uh, KaneCountyAssessments.org. You can see something called progress report, which will show where we are for every township in the county. Uh, but generally you're going to see these start publishing within about 60 days and then running until we're complete. Statutorily, townships don't even turn them in until June 15th, although we already have three that are in so far. So, but we're, what we're working on is the 2021 taxable year. The tax bills you just got are based on the assessments in the 2020 tax year. If you want to, if you have a concern about your assessment, it is too late by the time you get your tax bill. Does that answer your question, Mr. Ford? It, 
somewhat, I, I, if it's based on the on when the papers actually make the uh, publication, then I don't know how we let residents know that 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 they have a, a what their window is for this to happen. That's an excellent question. There are three ways notification takes place. As I mentioned, the General Assembly has already provided that the primary method of notification, you know what, I'm gonna stand, I've already been two weeks past my Pfizer exam, so I'm gonna take this off so everyone can hear me clearer. The, uh, the General Assembly has provided that the primary means of notification is newspaper publication. We've actually opposed that here in Kane County and said there are better ways to spend $160,000, but the newspapers have assured us that they have studies showing that most people would prefer to get their notices in the newspaper than any other method. And apparently, to at least to date, the General Assembly believes the newspapers are correct because they, otherwise they would change that, wouldn't they? Now, beyond that, if there's no change by the township assessor, then there's no additional mandated notice. So what I have provided though is a notice that any taxpayer can get automatically. You go to canecountyassessments.org and then you go to the subscribe link and you enter your email address and every time I publish a township, you're gonna get a notice sent to you including links on how to check your assessment, how to contact your local township assessor and the steps to take if you have concerns about your assessment. Now, in addition to that, if there is an actual change made by the township assessor to your property's valuation, then a mailed notice also goes out, and that goes out in any year. Now, we could, in theoretically, mail notices to everybody in every year, but there's a cost involved in that. It seems almost uh, ironic to uh, to spend a lot of money to tell people about taxes and then raise their taxes in doing so, which is why about 10 years ago, I sought for the method of the email notification. Notice of that uh, way to sign up for that notification goes out in every tax bill. So if you look at the letter I wrote you in this tax bill, like I have for the past dozen years, you'll see that notice. It also goes out in every other communication that I send including those of you who get emails from me, and I believe, Mr. Ford, I sent you an email uh, yesterday. Um, in the notice right below, that's a Get King County Assessment News. There's a link, you can click that and subscribe that way. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Ready to call the question, any other discussion? Roll call, please. <clears throat> Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Thank you. Thank you, and I would urge all of us to sign up on Mr. Armstrong's website so we know how our property is being evaluated. Thank you, <clears throat> including myself. The next is transportation. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I have uh, 18 items. This is our typical big spring uh, pre-construction season agenda. I will move all 18. Four seconds. Okay, um, I can move through them fairly quickly. Um, item one and two are of note, oh, though. Hold, hold on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Please move number five, please. Um, yeah, I guess Mr. Kais wants to remove number five, so I'll, I'll address that, but okay, so we, we can take that off consent. We're taking number five off of consent. Okay. So numbers one and two, I do want to uh, put a little time into them because they're very important. This is to uh, both approve our 2050 transportation plan and our five-year annual update to the transportation improvement plan. Um, these are both required and it took quite a bit of staff time and uh, we had a special committee uh, work on these. Um, I think it was really interesting that we had a huge amount of public input. Sometimes you, you have these public hearings and ask for input and you don't get a whole lot of it, but we had a lot of input and I do wanna uh, tip my hat to uh, staff for getting this done and uh, so forth. So uh, one and two are those. Uh, item three is a grant to approve uh, funds for the Ride and Cane program from the 
RTA. Item four is uh, to approve planning liaison uh, compensation to King County. This is for work our staff does with the, the uh, Council of Mayors and CMAP. Um, items five through 13 uh, are contracts for construction or related IGAs and land acquisition. Uh, Mr. Caius mentioned item five, which is accepting some additional funds for the Longmeadow Park Parkway project. So we will remove that from the consent. Items 14 through 17 are engineering and survey professional service agreements. And uh, again, item 18, uh, an important one. Uh, this is the final item, approving the appointment of our county engineer. Every six years, the, uh, the state uh, requires that we uh, reapprove a contract with our county engineer, who is Carl Scheidel. So this would uh, approve him for an extension of another six years. So that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, are there any comments to this? Comments, Kofi? Uh, Mr. Kofi. Thank you, ma'am. Um, uh, Drew, is there, uh, I thought we had discussion about the intersection of Freeman and, and Benny, and that was going to be on the uh, comprehensive plan. Is that a separate comprehensive plan, or is that, would, would that have been pertained to this comprehensive plan? If it's this comprehensive plan, I would hope that it's uh, not ignored. Yeah, I believe that would be under the five-year uh, transportation improvement plan. That that's the one that lists our items. Uh, Tom Rick Tom Rickard is coming to the podium to discuss that. Thank you. Yes, the intersection of Freeman and Galligan has been added to the transportation improvement program, so it is within the five-year financial plan. So both of those, uh, the 2050 transportation plan and the five-year uh, TIP or transportation improvement plan are both included in your agenda. That's why we're at almost a thousand pages, um, but they're both in there and they do list the projects. So you're welcome to peruse that. And if you have any questions, you can call myself or staff. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Um, I, I would like to commend uh, Mr. Fraz and staff for the report of the long range transportation plan. Uh, it is an amazing document and well put together. And it, it certainly heralds um, everything that we are talking about here on the board with redistricting on what's gonna be happening towards the future. And I'd like to just quickly bring everybody's attention to what is considered packet page 608. And if you take a look at our population, if you hadn't seen that on the news, um, our population by 2050 is forecasted to increase 42.5%. That is a significant increase in our population here in Kane County. And we're going to need effective roads and, and modes of transportation to support all of those new families and uh, individuals who are going to become future residents of Kane County. Yeah, and your uh, Fraz speaking, your your typical transportation project of any substance, you know, takes four to five years. So that's why uh, advanced long-term planning is so important. Uh, we're actually starting planning projects for improvements of intersections that, to most people, would look pretty much brand new. But with those forecasts, we know that within five years they're going to need additional lanes and so forth. And so we're already working on that. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, staff uh, did a great job, and thanks to the public for. Uh, participating so heavily. I, I, I commend uh, public transportation for their strategic planning, their long-term strategic planning. It's critically important to support Kane County. Well done, well done. Um, so if there's no further discussion, may we please call the vote for items? Uh, items uh, one through 18, with the exception of item five. Bates? Bates, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Kenyon? Kenyon, yes. Caius? Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Thank you. Motion passes.
So um, I guess we would have to take item five separately. So I'll move item five. We need a second. Pardon a second. Mr. Tepe seconds. And is there any discussion? Madam Chairman? Yes. Or, Roz, thank you very much. Chris Caius, uh, board member from District 23, three, through which this project runs on behalf of the constituents in my area. Um, I'd like to speak out on this one, um, not particularly to, and don't get me wrong, I think uh, it's great that they wanna give us extra money, an extra million here and an extra million there really helps. Uh, but I am speaking out uh, and will continue to speak out until when we uh, get some of these resolutions that apply to this toll, which is a uh, regressive toll in which about 30%, minimum 30% goes to someone outside the county just for collecting the money uh, until we address that in the resolutions that are brought forward on this project that this toll will be sunsetted uh, and actually get it into print. I understand that was the intention at the beginning, but uh, I wanna make sure that until it actually is acknowledged and we actually can sunset this toll, uh, I will be speaking out. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bates? Present. Berman? Berman, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, no. Sanchez? No. Strathman? Yes. Surges? Surges, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Shepro. Shepro, yes. Thank you. Motion passes. I believe that there is no need for executive session. What? <laughs> Are there any committee reports? Uh, Madam Chairman, for I was speaking, um, actually this is kind of a question of a committee uh, uh, Cliff, I know last month I, I brought up the issue of um, giving guidance to our departments on reopening. I know there was a flurry of uh, emails, but I'm just wondering, or Madam Chairman, I, you know, is there a, a goal set, a time set? Is there going to be guidance given as far as reopening all of our departments? Um, I have not. I have sought uh, information from all of our department heads, and they shared all that with me, and I sent all of that information to Mr. Surges who is carefully considering it, and I'll turn this over to him. Drew, you just meet me to the punch. On committee reports, I would have said that this is a major issue that we're, uh, that we're taking on. We met yesterday at 2 o'clock. We sought input from many different sources, including the state's attorney's office. We do have this our, on our uh, human services agenda for next Wednesday, um, and, and we're trying to have this all put together as expeditiously as possible. But we're, I mean, this is... This is one of those conversations. It's not an easy one, and there's just you know too many chiefs in the you know too, too many cooks in the kitchen on this one, and we're just trying to do this oh, as we broad brushed as we can. So I, I appreciate that. I just we're, uh, we're on it though. I think we you know we really need to look don't, at uh, uh, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> okay. I just think we really need to look at a you know June July opening. Uh, I know the governor's. Uh, talked about this July 4th, but uh, we really need to get people back in here, especially they've been, they've been vaccinated. So uh, thanks for all your work. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and Drew, just since we're you know, discussing the topic, one of the hurdles that we're trying to cross is between the governor's phase four and phase five, so there's what's called a bridge. The bridge is really undefined. That, that's the long matter. The bridge is really undefined. So trying to put together- Is it a toll bridge? Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Trying to put something together on that when it's an undefined is really proving to be an uphill battle. So we might just come out with information that says as we go from four to five, then we'll go from there. So yeah. I, I just know when we closed down, it was really almost a, you know, department by department decision. So I, I, I'd like to have more of a, uh, 
across the board guidance uh, from above on that sort of thing. So thank you. Madam Chair Bates, please. Um, and it, yes, Ms. Bates, give me just a second. And sure. that is what the department heads have all shared with me, that they want a general policy uh, defined by the board. <clears throat> Uh, but a, so that they can also work within their departments. Because mm -hmm. I have to say that um, COVID has changed how people do work. As we can see online, we've had board members who have participated solely online uh, through our meetings rather than being here in person as well. Just as an example, how work, workflow has changed be, uh, due to COVID and technology has uh, impacted us all. Uh, Ms. Bates, yes. Um, so as I look at the Illinois Department of Public Health website, King County is still orange, which indicates there are warning signs of increased COVID-19 risk in the county. So I wanna make sure that we're not rushing this too much and asking our employees to come back too soon or opening up uh, people to risk too soon. And, and that I think that further discussion will be happening um, next week. Thank you. Question, Shepro. Mr. Shepro. Uh, for those of us that are new to the board, um, I guess my question is, um, how was the decision made originally to close down the county? Because I know, for example, that the county clerk's office has now officially reopened in full as of last Monday. Was this done simply in response to the the statewide declaration of emergency? Was there action taken by the county board was action taken by the chair i'm uh the governor's talked as somebody alluded to about removing all the restrictions potentially uh the next time around uh and so i guess again it's multiple questions if that happens uh would that automatically reopen us or do we have to take specific action to do that um, and we'll build that into our report if that's okay. Sure. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair Gums on the committee report. Yes, Ms. Gums. Um, just really briefly, um, Legislative Committee would like to bring to your attention on the full county board next Tuesday. There'll be a resolution um, for you all to look at opposing the reduction of the LGDF revenue that the governor has proposed. Um, he wants to take money away from us, so we'd like to put that on the agenda. I just wanted to let everybody know that that'll be coming in your packet for Tuesday. Thank you. I, I personally look forward to seeing that. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, Caius for administration. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who attended the uh, grand opening of the multi-use facility, uh, which was a grand success, I believe. Everyone got tours through the new coroner's office. It will serve the county for us for a long time to come. And if you didn't make it, they're certainly willing to, uh, they're ready and willing to give tours uh, on a, on a uh, requested basis uh, to, to, so you can be familiar with the, what's going on at the co new coroner's office. Uh, I, I think they're, they were moving over the weekend and they're planned on being moved in now. Um, on another note, uh, we at, at the administration uh, committee last month, we had Jason Dwyer from White, they are architects who gave an excellent presentation uh, because we are in currently uh, getting ready to address a co comprehensive plan on facilities throughout the county, what, which ones to uh, improve uh, so that we have a strategic plan in the future on how to address uh, capital improvements and repairs and things like that. And Mr. What, uh, Mr. Dwyer, at, uh, I re-listened to Got the Time. If you go to our, uh, on the YouTube channel, go in about 60 minutes on the last uh, meeting for the administration committee, you can watch the slides and presentation. And I encourage you to do so, so you can familiarize yourself on the history of the Judicial Center and uh, the things that White did out at that facility. And I, was there anything else on that one, Drew? No, I, we're going to maybe start a small working group to work with White to help answer questions as they start down that road, and then we'll bring it through committee. So look forward to that, and I encourage you to watch that just as a history of uh, what happened. Thank you. What's got us to here. Thank you. And it was a wonderful opening, and thank you for being such a uh, gracious host. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I speak. 
Um, Madam Chair, I, I, I'm, I'm just looking for some guidance. Uh, someone had, re a constituency had reached out to me regarding the CDBG block grants. And I, my communication was I'm, I'm ignorant to how that, what it is, where it comes from, how it works. So I'm just reaching out to the group. If anybody knows, just call, call me offline. That would be Mr. Berger. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. That would be your first call on that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And could you please share what the CDBG is? For no. the people? True. Community, <laughs> community, <laughs> community, community Development community, Block Grants. Community Development and so, Block Grants. And so yeah, that's their, their, their for, don't get enough. Mr. Kenyon. Following Mr. Kayas, um, this, this report from White is very important. Uh, the whole board needs to hear it. I don't know if you want to do it in a cow meeting or this meeting, but you know, this, this planning stuff, that's what you're all about. Yes. And we all need to know it so we can have input into it. I, I think that's an exceptional good idea. We'll put it up on cow um, and invite them. That way we can ask questions and be better informed. Okay, thank you. And anything else? Yes. We have one item. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. Gums. No call. <laughs> no call. Uh, no call. Do we have, uh, no I won't even ask for any yeses. Do we have any nays? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. It is adjourned. Thank you very Thank much. You all.